everybody. Uh, welcome to our Men's Leadership Network podcast. I'm so glad you're joining in today and uh, watching as we uh, endeavor to help all of us um, become better spiritual leaders, become men after God's heart, and to follow Him all the days of our lives. Our, our goal at MLN is to help us all reach our full potential in Christ and to uh, grow in our relationships, to grow in our careers, to, to be all that God desires. And so I'm just so thankful you're joining in. We've had incredible content uh, you can go back and watch some of the previous podcasts and learn and grow. And, and man, I just love what God's doing in your life, and I'm praying for you. Uh, today I'm joined by Dr. Derek Bruff, and uh, Derek Thanks, is an incredible man. He is, uh, has a Ph.D. in math, which is yeah. pretty awesome, and <laughs> teaches at Vanderbilt. Uh, he travels all over the world and a lot of countries um, talking about teaching. He's also written a book on Clicker, yeah. and, uh, which has been a, a big hit and a big uh, seller all over. And yeah. it's been great to see how God's used you, Derek, professionally. And you have this incredible career, but even above that, what I think is so special about you is you are a great dad. And uh, thank you, Jeff. I know your girls, and I've loved watching them grow up, and I've loved seeing you be so intentional with them. And so I really appreciate you joining us today, Derek. Well, thanks for having me yeah, here. I'm yeah. looking forward to the conversation. Uh, it's going to be great. So let me ask you, Derek. I mean, as I've watched you, how have you become such a great dad? I mean, what's the motivator behind you pouring into your children like you do? Well, and, and you mentioned my professional career, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I pour into that and I try to excel there, certainly. Um, but as you say, I, I, you know, like being a dad is kind of job number one for me. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, I don't usually talk about being a dad. Usually when I'm doing interviews, it's about teaching with technology or something. But um, I think for me, wanting to be an intentional and effective dad um, comes from kind of two, two, two motivations. One is that I see it as how I serve God, mm. right? God has called me to uh, minister to this world, right? And he's given me lots of opportunities to do that, but he's really blessed me with these two little girls. Mm. Um, Sophie's 13 and Lucy is nine. Uh, and um, he, he calls me to teach them, to train them, to care for them, to support them. Uh, and so it's how I serve God, by, by loving my girls well mm. um, and being, being intentional with how I parent them. And the other thing, and uh, I, I really learned this from my own dad, actually, is uh, it, he always delighted in his children, mm. right? Whether we were little or in middle school or going off and, you know, going to college or what have you. He, he just enjoyed spending time with us. He enjoyed what we accomplished and who we were. Mm. And so that's true for me, too. Yeah. I mean, my... I love my daughters. They're fantastic, and they're creative, and they're compassionate, and they're clever, uh, and they just, they entertain me. We have fun together. Um, so it's, it's, in many ways, it's easy to, to care for them and to parent them because they just bring me so much joy. Wow. I love that. <laughs> you know, I do. I love that. I love that you just love being with your kids, and I love that your dad passed that on to you, you know, and, and your dad would be really proud of you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Derek, you have the unique situation of being a, a single dad. Yeah. And uh, how has that impacted your parenting? Well, uh, as a single dad, um, so there's like, there's some practical stuff, right? Yeah. So uh, for instance, I will go to uh, like, you know, a girl's clothing store, right? <laughs> um, and I'll be the only dad in there, yeah. right? And so I, there are some things I think I do with my daughters, because they are daughters, right, that some of my married dad friends don't do. Um, and so whether it's shopping for clothes with them or doing their hair or, you know, getting supplies for my teenager's girl stuff, as she mm, calls it. Yeah. Um, like, like, I'm just kind of a part of their life in, in, in ways that I just have to be practically, mm. right? Um, and I think that's kind of a blessing, right? I mean, I, I, uh, I, I get to, I get to help them pick out an outfit for the daddy daughter ball, right? Like <laughs> yeah. we go, we go dress shopping, uh, and so just you know, taking Lucy into the clothing store and watching her come out and try on different outfits and spin around, right? Mm. Like, like I, it, it's it's great. That's. Um, I mean, some of that's challenging, right? So like road trips with the girls when they were littler, and it was you know, one of me and two of them, and they're both girls, and we have to make a bathroom stop, mm. and somehow I have to figure out how to make Cracker Barrel work for that, right? Yeah. So there's some challenging stuff there. Uh, the other thing, I think more fundamentally, is um, uh, so, so I'm not just a single dad, I'm a divorced dad, mm. right? And so I share custody. The girls are with their mom a lot of the time. And so I end up with what 
so I'm a mathematician, so I'm going to go a little math here, right? Um, I, uh, I have what I sometimes call a binary life, mm. right? So there's times when I don't have the girls, they're with their mom, and those are the times where I'm, I'm really kind of investing in the rest of my life, mm -hmm. right? I might stay at work late and get, get ahead on stuff, or I'm spending intentional time with friends, or I'm working out, or, or what have you. Um, and then there's times when the girls are with me, and then my goal is to be really intentional and spend that time with them, mm. right? To kind of block out all the other stuff and focus as much of my time and effort on them as I can. Yeah. And so it's a little bit, it can be a little jarring sometimes, right? To kind of be like single guy here and dad here, right? Yeah. The next day. And it's not quite so clean, right? So like I make an effort to talk to my girls on the phone every day, mm -hmm. no matter whether or not I see them. And there's times when the girls are with me, but some kind of special opportunity has come up and I'll get a babysitter and I'll, I'll go out and I'll take some time for me, right? It's hard to not spend that time with them. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that sometimes that's okay too, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's this binary life that I've had to kind of figure out and juggle and, and find ways to be, um, to kind of make that work for me. Yeah. Well, how, how do you balance that? Because I think a lot of guys are, are, are listening and, and, and going, wow, you have a successful career. I mean, and it's just been up and to the right and all the, these things. But how do you balance having a successful career and trying to be a great dad? I mean, sometimes those are come into conflict, yeah, right? Yeah. I think for me, some of it is this kind of focus and preparation, mm. right? So, um, you know, when I go into the office, I work hard, mm. <laughs> right? Because... Later, I'm going to see my girls, and I don't want to have to have that work hanging over me, right? And so I'm focused. I get stuff done. Um, there's some preparation, right? So if I'm going to have the girls, you know, Thursday night through Monday morning, which happens every other weekend, Wednesday night, I clean the house. I make my shopping list. I hit the grocery store, right? I plan menus for the weekend, right? I go running. Wh whatever I need to do to get me ready so that those next four nights, I can really focus on the mm. girls and, and, and spend time with them. It doesn't always work, right? Sometimes I'm like, hey, girls, it's Thursday, and we have nothing to eat, so we're going to go to Publix, and <laughs> it's going to be a little crazy, right? Um, but the more I can kind of focus my effort and time and kind of prepare for that time mm -hmm. with the girls, I think that helps. Uh, the other thing that I've found is that, um, at least for me, it's really important for us to spend time together, the three of us doing stuff that we like, mm. right? And so I've, I've worked to try to find things that we all like to do, that we can spend kind of quality time together, all three of us. Mm. Um, and, I, and again, I think that helps me kind of get more out of the time that I have with my girls. Um, so we play a lot of board games, mm. yeah. <laughs> a lot of board games. Um, but, you know, there's often some, uh, like a TV series we're, we're, we're working through or uh, uh, movies to watch. Um, we like to enjoy kind of what Nashville has to offer. You know, we've got great parks, we've got a great zoo, we'll yeah. go to Cheekwood, right? And like, we'll go to Cheekwood. I, we went a few months ago, this was, I guess, I guess last year when the weather was kind of nice. And, you know, uh, Lucy brought her camera. She wanted to take photos of the pretty flowers, right? Mm -hmm. Sophie brought her sketchbook. She wanted to draw them, right? And I just wanted to hang out with the girls, right? And, and so all three of us had a great time there that day. Uh, and so I think some of it is kind of looking for those opportunities um, where all of you kind of enjoy the thing and you get to do it together. Mm. Another thing that I think has been helpful for me is to make an effort to do uh, what I call family reading time. So almost every night before bed, we spend you know, 10, 15 minutes gathered around a book that I'm reading to my girls. And so we've been doing this for years. Uh, we read through The Hobbit and The Westing Game. We did the entire Narnia series. Yeah. We've done a whole bunch of different books. And, and I think part of it is just making the commitment to say this is really important and yeah, maybe it's a little late, or maybe we have to shortchange something else, but family reading time is important for the three of us. It's, it's how we come together as a family and kind of love each other, and so I'm going to make time to make that work, mm. uh, and, and just to try to be as intentional about that as I can. Wow, you know what I love about listening to you talk about that is just that you're so intentional with your parenting. You know, it's like a lot of times as guys, we, we're real intentional with work. And then we go, okay, well, then whatever I have left over, right? You know, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and what I'm hearing you say and what I pray for me and for all of us is that we can get to the point where we go, listen, I want to come into work. I want to dive into it and do it well, but I want to put a boundary on there yeah. so that I get home and I'm not giving my family leftovers. I'm already planned out. Yeah. You know, I want, yeah. I want not, you know, work to drive my family time. I want family time to drive what I do at work. Yeah, yeah, and 
professionally, like that can mean some sacrifices. Yeah. Right. So for me, with my parenting, my single parenting schedule, I have the girls every other weekend. Right. And so sometimes I'll get invited to give a talk at some university on a weekend that I've got the girls, and I just, I just have to say no. Right. Mm. And sometimes they can change their date, and sometimes they can't. And so I've lost that opportunity professionally. But for me, I think of the girls, you know, I've got them for like 18 years, and then who knows what's, you know, yeah. they go off and explore the world, right? And so that time, I really have to prioritize them. And yeah. so if that means my career goes a little bit more slowly than it could, um, I, I'm going to be okay with that decision, I think. <laughs> well, and that's a great point. I mean, because, you know, when you go to speak, I know you said coming up, you've got Brown University, Northwestern, but then you're going to the UAE, right. you know, you're traveling <laughs> yeah. over Saudi Arabia. I mean, so you're... You're all over the world, and you know probably sometimes you do have to say no. Right. And uh, I do think it's a good perspective to think, man, Sophie's 13. I've got five years. Don't say that, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that's hard, isn't it? Right. I mean, it's tough. It's TikTok, tough. TikTok, right? I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you're being intentional in the midst of that. Yeah. Um, what do you think it, it's, it's good for married meant to know, you know, because you're being a single dad, yeah. and you can have this, um, you know, kind of two lives right there, right. but, but married, you're, you're in this, you're in the midst of it, right? Yeah, so yeah. what would you say to guys who are married in the, in the midst of that? I think, so I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I, and I don't, I don't know that I, I used to would have used this word, but I think I've been learning a lot about what it means to lead mm. in a relationship and in a family, right? Uh, and so, for instance, one of the things that my girls and I have figured out that we like to do mm. is every year we have a party that's just for fun, right? It's not a birthday party. It's just a for fun party. Yeah. So a few years ago, uh, it was May the 4th, right? Star Wars Day. We're yeah, May the 4th with exactly. you, And we're like, we're going to throw a Star Wars, par Star Wars party. And, you know, the girls invited their friends, and all the moms were like, should I bring a birthday gift? I'm like, no, this is not a birthday party. It's just a for fun party, right? Yeah. And so we spend a few weeks together, the three of us, planning activities and decorations and Star Wars themes, food, right? We had uh, Vaderade to drink, <laughs> right? Yoda <laughs> soda, right? I mean, that's awesome. Know, there's a little Pinterest action here, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, and, and, and so we have fun. We did that. We did a board game theme party. We did an art party last year. Um, the girls now look forward to this every year. Like, what's going to be our theme for the party this year, Dad? Mm. And for me, it's... And what I'm saying to other dads is you don't have to make a party, right? Like, that's the thing that works for the three of us. Right. But I think what's important is that I'm going out of my way to do something that I totally don't have to do as a dad, but I want to do, and I want to show my girls that I love them, and I want to spend time and energy and creative energy mm. on them. And I think, I think my advice for married dads and I, is... is to lead in your family. Yeah. And I think sometimes there's a little temptation to kind of let your wife kind of take over yeah. and run some of the parenting for you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and show up, right? I know plenty of dads that, that they, they will show up, mm -hmm. right? And they will invest. But I think there's a, a, a piece of kind of creative energy and leadership where you need to find something that you do, that you're driving, mm -hmm. that you're showing your kids, this was my idea because I love you and I want to invest time in you. And, you know, when you pursued your wife, yeah. right? Like, like it's that same kind of energy, that kind of proactive energy that I think you need to invest in your kids. And, it, and again, it can be your thing, right? Mm. Like, like your thing doesn't have to be my thing. Right. But it's, it's being kind of proactive and taking that leadership role in the parenting of your kids that I think is really important. I love that word lead, you know, because we are talking about spiritual leadership. And, and, and I do think you're right. Sometimes, and, and, and I fall into this situation, being married and my, my wife's a great mom. I mean, so she's... So I, I sometimes let her take the lead on that, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and yet when, when I do step up and do the daddy daughter ball or right. we do these yeah. things, you know, that, and, uh, you know, I drive away and I go get roses for them and then I come yeah. back and pick them up and they have, and they just go right. crazy and, right. and it's so sweet. But I think for all of us to be intentional and to, and to take the lead on those experiences, or whether it's a vacation, or whether it's a weekend, right. yeah, 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 you know, and sometimes the the mom can be the one to, to plan some of those things, or say, hey, we don't ever right. do this, 
And for us, I think all of us to say, let's be intentional and let's lead out. On yeah. That. And if you've got a great partner, that's fantastic. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, oh, yeah. You know, you know, Praise work God. as a team yeah. and absolutely. But, yeah. But I think it, I think it says a lot to your kids when there's, there's things that it's, that they clearly know that was your idea and your initiative. Yes. Right. I mean, that, that shows them their value in yes. a special way. Yes. That's huge. And I love that uh, reading time. That's, you know, just those little things I think make a difference. One of the things I've, I've watched you through the years, Derek, yeah. do, uh, and I always think this is so cool, is your <laughs> lunchbox notes. <Yes. laughs> Talk about that for a minute because you do a great job with this. Okay, so um, I actually saw a couple of other dads do this several years ago. Really? Like they were sharing these on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm like, I think I can do that too. And so what I'll do once or twice a week is I'll, I'll get out a little, I usually do a little index card with no lines, and I'll write a little note, right, to go in their lunchbox the next day. And it's usually like I'm thinking of you, or we had a great weekend, or I'm so proud of you for the thing you did, right? There's a little message, but then I illustrate it. So I'm, you know, I'm a little artistic, right? I like drawing. And so I'll, um, I'll add a, you know, a cartoon character or a character from a book we're reading, or um, sometimes just a picture of a cute animal, right? Um, sometimes I make up my own characters. Uh, <laughs> I had a whole series in October of like, like uh, cute versions of like movie monsters, like the Wolfman and Scarecrows and things. That's good. Cool. Um, and so sometimes it's creative. Sometimes I'm just, you know, finding a, a, a movie they watch recently and kind of drawing the lead character or something. But there's this little piece of art on the lunchbox note, and then it goes in with them. And, I, and they love it, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's a way for me to tell them that I love them mm. and I'm thinking about them. And again, I've spent a little time, right? I mean, it usually takes 15 minutes per lunchbox note. So wow. like on a Thursday night, that's, it's late and I, you know, I gotta make the effort. Um, but I'm spending that time on them and I'm giving them a little thing, right? Mm. Um, and they, you know, they show it to their friends. <laughs> they get home at the end of the day and compare notes, right? To see what their sister got. Um, they keep them all in little photo albums. I love that. And uh, it's just, it's a way that I've found to kind of regularly send a little message to my girls mm. that I love them and I care about them and I want to, you know, invest my time and energy in them. Oh, I think it says so much. <laughs> I mean, I really do. I think it communicates more than the drawing or more than the sketch. It just communicates, I care, you know, and yeah. I'm praying for you and I'm thankful for you and I'm thinking about you. I think that just is exponential, yeah. you know. And again, other dads, like if you can't draw, find something else. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, like yeah, it yeah, have yeah. To be this. Yeah. But I think I like it because, like the family reading, like it's a regular thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's part of kind of who they are and the you know the tradition of being in, in our family in the Bruff family. Yeah. Right? Like this is part of the experience of being a kid in our family. Oh, and I, I think that. it helps us. Yeah. It, it helps us. Yeah. Come together as a family. Yeah. You ever put any, like, math problems in there for them? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, you know, what I think about, too, is that, you know, we're not only teaching our kids um, to be great kids. We're trying to teach our kids how to be great adults. Yeah. And our kids one day, what, how are they going to parent? And you mentioned something earlier about what you learned from your dad. Yeah, yeah. You know, talk about that. Because, obviously, your dad had a huge impact on you. Um, yeah, I was... Um, I was so blessed to have a fantastic dad, Praise right? God. And I, yeah. you know, I've heard you talk before about other folks, and you know, when they think of God the Father, they have these these negative images because mm. their their earthly dads were were bad, yeah. right? I, that's not me, right? Mm. And so I'm so thankful that God blessed me yeah. with a wonderful dad and a wonderful mom who loved me and invested in me, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, like I say, he delighted in his kids, mm. right? That was something that came through loud and clear. The other, another big thing that he taught me um, was that you can't control your circumstances, but you can control your attitude, mm. how you react to those circumstances. Uh, he had a time, he had just turned 40, and he had a heart attack, and he lost his job. Mm -hmm. And that was a rough season in his life. And he couldn't control either of those things, mm. right? Um, but he could control his attitude, and he could bring hope to that situation, right? Wow. And bring faith to that situation. Uh, and, and, you know, he got another job, right? Um, he totally revamped his diet and exercise, right? So that, so that the heart attack wouldn't happen again. And mm. I was so proud to see him kind of transform physically and kind of in terms of his daily routines. Mm. But it's that message of kind of controlling your attitude. Um, so my dad died of cancer, um, gosh, I guess 11, 12 years ago now. Um, so I've been without him for a while, which mm. is really hard, mm. <laughs> um, especially as I, as I spend more time as a parent. Mm. Like I, I really wish I had, I had him with me 
right? Like we, we had a very short time to be parents together, mm-hmm. right, before he passed away. Um, he did get to meet Sophie, which was great. I have some awesome. beautiful pictures of him and, and Sophie as a baby. Mm. But even when he was going through the cancer, right? And, and I remember sitting, seeing him in his recliner and like he only had a few weeks left. And he just kept saying, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good, right? And he knew, like, either God's going to heal him and he'll spend more time with his wife and his kids, or God won't and he'll be with God in heaven. Mm. And, like, he was good either way, right? Mm. He knew that God was going to take care of him. And he could have fought, he could have raged, he could have been angry, right? Mm. But, and he couldn't control the cancer, right? right? But he could control his attitude. And so that's something I've taken from him. Because I, I have stuff in my life that I can't control, right? Yeah. Like, I didn't want to be a single dad. Mm. That that mm. that wasn't plan A, right? right. Um, and it's, but I I've learned that God can walk me through these things, mm. right? He can walk me through hardships. He can walk me through the challenges of being a single parent, mm. of being a dad, mm. right? And I don't get it right. I mess up a lot, right? And I learn every every day, every year. I learn mm. more about what it means to be a good dad. Um, but I know that I've got to. I can control my attitude, right? Mm. I can choose how I respond to things. And I know I can lean on him to get me through what's hard and mm. to teach me what I need need to be taught. I had I had this realization a few weeks ago. One of my goals for kind of 2017 is I really want to learn more about God the Father, mm. right? As I think about missing my own dad, um, I know that God is my father. Yeah. And I want to learn about fathering from him. Right, and so that's one of my goals this year is to kind of study and read and, and talk more about God as my father, because mm. I've learned a lot about God as a dad, right? Mm. And when I think about my kids, and you know, when one of them has like a fit, <laughs> and they're screaming and they're punching and they're angry, and I'm like, you are not likable at all right now. <laughs> right? Like, like if you were some random kid off the street, I'd be like, pass. Someone else take that one, right? But, but I love her, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to keep loving her. And that my love is unconditional because she's my daughter, right? right? And you've talked about like mm-hmm. when your, your, your first child was born, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, like here is, she is this kind of slimy, screaming thing who can do nothing <laughs> positive for you, right? right? She's totally dependent on you. She keeps you up at night. She poops everywhere, right? Yeah. Like, again, like rationally, that's not an attractive thing, right? Yeah. But they're our daughters, mm-hmm. right? They're our kids. Mm-hmm. And we love them unconditionally mm-hmm. and we invest in them. And when I think about God mm-hmm. doing that to me, wow. right? No matter how I screw up and when I rage and I throw a fit and yeah. I'm unlikable, right? God still loves me. So that's awesome. <laughs> Man, that's that's awesome. So, <laughs> hey, what, what what advice would you give to um, all the dads that are watching, whether they're in a, a, a two parent, you know, home, or whether they're a single dad like you? What what advice would you give? I think. Um, <laughs> So, like I said, I think it's important to take the lead, yeah. right, to kind of pursue your kids, to give them your time and energy, right, in, in hopefully some creative ways. Um, I do think you have to prioritize them sometimes. Uh, so, uh, a few years ago, I took my kids on a, a week-long trip out west. We went to California and Arizona. Um, we called it the Animal Vegetable Mineral Tour. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dorky, but I have a PhD in math. I can, yeah. I can be dorky, right? Yeah. Um, and because we were seeing the biggest of each, right? Yeah. Animal vegetable. We, we went whale watching. Um, we saw redwoods and sequoias, right? Yeah. We saw the Grand Canyon, which was our mineral category, right? It was an epic week, epic week, right? And it was expensive, right? <laughs> and I had to decide, like, can I spend the money on this, right? What are the other things I'm not going to get to do? What are the things I'm not going to get to buy so that I can I can take the resources God's given mm. me and, and spend it this way? Mm. But I kept thinking, my girls were five and nine that summer. I'm like, this is the only year they're five and nine, right? I got to do it now, yeah. right? And so, and you can't do everything, right? right. There's always trade-offs, right. but I think you've got to find ways to prioritize your kids and take advantage of that time that you've got with them mm. while they're still with you, right? Because mm. they grow up so darn fast. Oh, yeah. The other piece I think that I'm learning, especially kind of this past year, is how important one-on-one time is Mm. with my girls. Um, It's hard as a single dad to get one-on-one time, right? There's two of them and one of me, and, you know, I have to kind of go out of my way to kind of make that happen. But so so Sophie turned 13 last fall, right? (laughs) And this is the girl who, when she was younger, if she had a thought in her brain, it came out of her mouth, right? Little Miss Chatterbox all the time. I had a constant stream of consciousness update on kind of how she was feeling and how she was thinking about everything. And then like teenager dumb hit. 
And now she's like the iceberg, right? Yeah. I get like the top 10% and there's all this stuff that's up going on with her. And I don't know what it is anymore because she's not, it doesn't all just come out, right? Mm. I took her out, just me and her for dinner and ice cream last fall. And it was like magic. It was chatterbox came back, right? Like it was just me and her, but I had to make that effort, right? Mm. And I had to kind of create that time where it was just me and her. There was no one else around, not even her sister. And she started to let me in again, right? And I've seen that even with her sister, right? And her, you know, Lucy's, Lucy's not a teenager yet, right? right? But even when I get her alone, there's kind of sides to her personality that I see that, that she doesn't show yeah. when her sister's around. Mm -hmm. And so that one-on-one -on -one time I think is really key. And I'm, I've been learning this year how important that is and how I've got to make time and effort to do that. It's, like I say, it's a little easier if you've got a partner, right? Yeah. If you're married, and you can divide and conquer and tag team a little bit. Um, but whether, whether you're married or not, uh, that one-on-one that -on -one time is, is really important. And, you know, I, I would agree with you on that. I mean, I think, but you have to schedule it. Yes. You know, and I think that's the thing that we, all of us, you know, dads, we, we kind of go, oh, yeah, I want that time with my kids and stuff. But then everything comes in. And I think Satan knows. I mean, I yeah. think Satan just, yeah. you know, this um, temptation toward busyness and you know, our lives get out of control and we're running, you know, and we end up being taxi drivers to one, you know, practice, right. soccer practice right. or, you know, basketball or whatever. And we're driving our kids around, but, but we don't ever stop to really schedule that, those times yeah. to really engage with them on a deeper level. And yeah. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's what comes out, you know? Yeah. We, uh, when Sophie turned 13, we had a PG-13 movie night. Ah. Right? It was just me and her. Right. Yeah. And so I picked a few kind of still appropriate, but movies she now qualified to watch. Right. <laughs> and so we watched three movies in one night. We had popcorn. We had a Starbucks run. Right. It was great. But like like I put that on my calendar a month out. Right? Yeah. Like just for her because her schedule is busy now, too, with yeah. school and soccer and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think the scheduling is important. The other thing, though, the taxi driver bit. Right. So. What I've also realized is that that's quality time. Yeah, right? that's true. Particularly if there's just one kid in the car. Yes. Right? That, I mean, yeah, maybe you're looking at them in your rearview mirror, but you might have 15 minutes to ask mm -hmm. them about their day and mm -hmm. what's fun about school or who they're hanging out with or yeah. what they're reading, right? Mm -hmm. Like, ask those questions. Yeah, be intentional with that yes. time instead of just, you know, throwing right. a movie on. Right. You know, or, right. Uh, you know, the Podcast radio. Podcast or radio, right? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Take advantage of that that time. It may just be 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, you got a captive audience. <laughs> you got a captive audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's great. Yeah, I love that. I, I think being intentional, we do think about the big things, which I think we need to, you know. And I love how you talked about. I planned for when she turned 13, or I planned for you know when this happened. And so you're looking in advance, right? Yeah. You're looking down the road. I'm mean, I'm sure you're probably already thinking you know, 15, 16, you know, some of these milestones. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love that. And I think, but I think it's being an intentional dad is also those those moments, like you said, yeah. hey, we're in the car for 15 minutes. Yeah. Or it's a lunchbox note. Or it's, a, hey, prayer time before bed. It's, you know, it's it's those things yeah, as well. Yeah, and and find something that fits your the pattern of your life, right? Yeah, so yeah. So like as a single dad, I don't see my kids every day. So yeah. I hear about other people who do stuff every day with their kids. I'm like, oh, I wish, I wish. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that, but yeah. I know. So this was another thing I realized as I was trying to find a good time for kind of a family Bible study time. Mm. And you know, bedtime is family reading time, right? Mm. So we already have that kind of time locked down. And I realized well, I have them every other Sunday morning before church. So let's get up 15 minutes earlier, right? And read the Bible together on the couch before we go. We're often late to church, I'm sorry. But that's, <laughs> that's how it goes, right? Um, but I finally figured out, okay, for my parenting schedule, I can do every other Sunday morning. I yeah. can commit to that and be consistent, right? And so whatever your your schedule is, right? Yeah. Like find those times on a weekly or bi-weekly basis where you're, you're being intentional and mm. you're scheduling that time with your kids. It also is preparing their hearts for church. You know, yeah. I mean, so they're coming not hurried and scattered. They're yeah. kind of coming focused. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's a cool thing as yeah. well. Now, talk, Derek, I, I, this is because this, I think this is a big thing. But your ultimate dream or your goals for being a parent or your legacy, you think you put a lot of thought into that. So talk about that. So um, last uh, last year uh -huh. here at Rolling Hills, we had an intentional parenting class. Mm. I think it was Doug and Kathy Fields were the curriculum writers. Okay. And in the first week, we were asked to think about the qualities we want our kids to have when they leave our homes, mm. right? And so I did some brainstorming and some doodling as I do. And, and I realized most of the things I wanted for my girls fell into kind of three buckets, right? 
Um, and so I want them to be um, people of integrity, mm -hmm. right? I want them to be honest. I want them uh, to kind of co commit to things, right? Um, uh, to keep their word. Uh, I want them to um, persevere when things are hard, mm. right? And so that's that's a lot about their self, yeah, right? Character right? Issues, yeah, character issues, right? And then then I also want them to be compassionate, mm. right? I want them I want them to think about others, uh, to to be generous, right, mm -hmm. with their time and their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I want them to respect other people, right? So there's kind of an outward focus that's around compassion, uh, and then I want them to be hopeful people. I want them to look up, right, and to see God, and to be faithful, um, and to be joyful, right, mm. um, and to have that that hope for a future, and 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 to know that God loves them, yeah. right. And so uh, it was really helpful to kind of sketch this out and doodle and 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 realize, yeah, these are the three things, right: the integrity about self, the compassion for others, and the hope that directs them to God. And I've found it really helpful over the past year as I'm making parenting decisions, right. Now I have this kind of rubric to say. What should I do in this situation? Well, will this help them learn to be compassionate? Mm. So, so let's go in that direction, right? Um, it's it's been helpful to have that kind of to take that time to think about who I want my girls to be when they leave me. Yeah. And then what can I do now along the way to kind of point them in that direction? Man, I love that. You talk about being intentional for the long term. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, that, yeah. That's that's, yeah. that's the daily and then the uh, monthly, the yearly, but then that's the the long term for yeah, them. Yeah, I yeah. I think it helps. You gotta. My dad would always talk about how, you know, when like like when you're born, right? Like mm -hmm. like I was entirely dependent on him. Yeah. Right. And by the time I left, I had to be not at all dependent on him. Mm -hmm. Right. So he thought about this kind of transition over 18 years, and so he was intentional about helping me make good decisions and be independent, right? And have a good attitude. And so, yeah, I, I, it, it was really helpful for me to think through who do I want my girls to be when they mm. leave me? What kind of people do I want them to be? How do I want them to love others and love God? Uh, and and to tr try to build my parenting around that. So how would you define that as legacy? What would you think if you oh, were to say, yeah. I want my legacy to be, what would that be for? That's a good question. Um, I think I want I want my daughters to be confident in themselves, um, to kind of know who they are, <laughs> um, uh, to to love people, to love God, right? Um, I, I I do a lot. I, honestly, it can be hard to be a dad of a daughter in this world, mm -hmm. right? Our world oh. often tells girls, "No, you can't," yeah. right? And I want them to know if that's something that they really want and they want to pursue and it's meaningful. Um, I want them to feel empowered to do that, right? Mm. And so I think part of that is me, right? Kind mm. of fueling them, right? Giving them the kind of jet fuel they need yeah. to take on the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's my legacy. I want, I I, I want them to be the, that, the, that, that kind of woman when they grow up. Yeah. Man, Derek, this is fantastic. I mean, you, you have that heart for them, and you are impacting generations. And, uh, Thank you, Jeff. And I just want to know I'm proud of you, and I'm praying with you and praying for you. And I'm praying for all of us who are dads out there because it's not easy, right? You know, and, and the world and everything else would war against us. But for us to, like you said earlier, set our mind on the Father yeah. and how the Father wants us to be intentional and what God's done in our lives. And I, and I hope and pray that you as a dad, you would be the best dad ever and that you would understand and I would understand we're not just raising great kids, we're raising great adults one day, that they would be men and women, young men and women who love God and who walk with him all of his days. So let me pray for us right now. God, thank you for today. Oh, God, thank you for what you've been doing through Derek and God in the life of Sophie and Lucy. And I pray a blessing on their family. And God, I pray for every one of us who are dads, who are watching this right now. God, I pray that you would call us to be intentional. I pray that, Father, in the little things, and whether it's car rides or lunch notes or, Father, whether it's times at night um, praying or reading, uh, but, Father, also in the big things, to look ahead at birthdays and, and to look ahead at years and to understand this is a short time. And for us not to let work or sports or culture come in and, and rob us of the opportunity to really pour into our children and be intentional dads. And so, God, help us to lead. God, help us as men not to take a back seat in our families, but to be the leaders that you have called us to be. And so I pray, God, an anointing of your spirit. And Father, I pray for courage, and I pray that you would use us for your glory. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Derek, thanks for being with us thanks, today. Jeff. Oh, yeah. this is so good. So good. And 
Everybody, thanks for watching today. Also, just want to encourage you, there's more MLM podcasts. You can go and find more of those to, just to help you grow and become all that God desires. I pray that you reach your full potential. And then also in April of 17, we're going to be kicking off our spring series. So jump in one of our live locations and also be watching online. Hey, guys, have a great day. God bless.